after feeling cooped up because of the pandemic, yes, I am super behind on posting these videos, I built out my SUV to become a car camper and naturally needed a way to test it out. So I recruited my friend Carly and we came up with a last minute plan to road trip around Lake Michigan. We're giving ourselves five days to travel 1300 miles, visit four states, touch three of the Great Lakes, and hopefully experience a side of the Midwest that isn't just flat cornfields. By the way, since we live between Chicago and Milwaukee, we didn't add those stops to this trip because they're an easy day trip for us, but they're both worthwhile stops if you're not from the area. Today we are starting our road trip around Lake Michigan. First stop, Door County. So the first stop on our road trip is here in Sister Bay in Door County, and we stopped at Al Johnson's Swedish Boutique Restaurant. Now we are a little bit too early to see the goats on the roof, unfortunately, but they do have some fake ones for us, at least in the meantime, we're about two weeks too soon. For those of you who don't wanna make the trip all the way here, they also have a goat cam that you can watch. We're gonna have to check that out when they're back. We did get some Swedish treats. This is the Monte Cristo sandwich and they made it with French toast. Oh, I guess that's what they call fries. Has some potatoes, it looks oh, yummy. Yeah, they said American fries, that's mm. interesting. And then this is our Swedish pancake and we also got- Sweet ball. Ba, 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 ba. Here are our Swedish meatballs. We passed up an Ikea to come here and get this instead. Just kidding, we went to Ikea and put them in this jar. <laughs> We are here at Cave Point County Park. It got very misty as we were driving in and then of course it started raining as soon as we pulled up. But the really cool thing about this spot is that you park literally right near the cool stuff to do. So it's very accessible and it looks like there's really cool cliff jumping that happens here. Definitely not going to happen right now because <laughs> it is cold and windy. Yeah, that's why, because <laughs> it's cold. Yeah, absolutely. Otherwise we would totally be doing 100%. this. Absolutely. <laughs> We survived our first night in our campground last night just outside of Green Bay, Wisconsin. And Carly cooked us some amazing burgers over the Flawless. fire. <laughs> I'm actually very impressed. And today we drove up to the UP. It was about two and a half hours, I would say, from our mm -hmm. campground. And our very first stop is right here. It's called Kitchetty Kippy, and it means the big spring. And we're gonna go right out on the boat that everybody else is on. Okay, we lied, it's not actually a boat, it's a dock, and there's actually these ropes that kind of pull it to the side, but the passengers on the dock actually have to do the rowing themselves. Are you gonna get us over there? Uh -huh. There's a big wheel that pulls it on the rope. It looks like we're gonna have a few people that we're gonna share it with, but overall it's actually pretty quiet here today. It's a Monday just before the major season starts, so I think this is a really good time to come. learned that the spring is 45 feet deep and it's Michigan's largest natural spring. The spring flows 10,000 gallons per minute and maintains a temperature of 45 degrees year round. So something that you have to do here in the UP is try something called a pasty and it's kind of like a meat pie. We're here at Muldoon's Pasties. Apparently this is the best one to get. So we got both the chicken and the traditional, which is beef and it comes with gravy. There's lots of veggies inside as well. So we're really excited to try these. Now, apparently the locals actually like to dip theirs in ketchup. So we're gonna try this both ways and let you know which way we like it the most. And we also have gravy to dip them in. The chicken comes with chicken gravy and the beef comes with beef gravy. So we also we're got ranch, I think. Give too. it a go, yeah. Ranch for so. the chicken. Lots of options here and we're starving, so it's gonna be delightful no matter what. Let us eat, yeah. bye. So, right. gonna get... so thumbs up or thumbs down on pasties? I'm gonna give it a thumbs up. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna say that for me, I liked both of them. The chicken was good, the beef was good, which was the traditional. Surprisingly, um, it was good with ketchup. I had my doubts, but it was actually pretty good. After we got our pasties, we went over and took a boat tour to the pictured rocks and it was, I thought it was really nice. 
Yeah, it was really nice. We did the Spray Falls tour at 5 p.m. and it was very light out because we're super far north. Yeah. Uh, so we got to see everything, including the additional Spray Falls. Not every boat tour has the Spray Falls stuff as well. So we saw Chapel Rock, Chapel Beach. We saw the Arches as well. Those were really cool. I would highly recommend that for anybody in the area to do a boat tour. We're going to hike in the area as well. We actually wanted to hike to Chapel Rock and Chapel Beach. We didn't realize how long of a hike it was. We just completely did not give ourselves enough time for it. So again, that's another thing I would love to do if I come back to the area. I think I'll definitely come back to the UP. I think it's not that far of a drive, especially from the Chicagoland area where we're from. So um, I can definitely see doing a lot more things up here. I think in some in some ways we didn't get to do the UP justice just because of our time restrictions. But I think if you are doing the loop around Lake Michigan, you need to stop in the UP yeah. and check out Pictured Rock because it was definitely worth it. And now we are heading to our next campsite in... Uh, what's it called? Ten, ten minutes. You got this. <laughs> but so it sounds like... <laughs> Tuquamanon. <laughs> Thank you. Nailed it. And now we're going to our campsite in Tuquamanon Falls. That is a mouthful, but it sounds like phenomenon, so we have to like remind ourselves that's how you say it. It's gonna be too dark to see the falls tonight by the time we set up camp, but we're gonna check it out first thing in the morning and yep. then head up to Whitefish Bay and then head down to Mackinac Island. I'm super excited for this. So we are hitting a lot of the major stops Definitely. on our way around Lake Michigan. So stay tuned and we'll see you tomorrow. Good morning from Taquanaman Falls State Park. This is the Rivermouth Campground. Beautiful view behind us. This was really fun to wake up to this morning. It's dry camping only here, but we survived. Even the vault toilets. <laughs> and now we're gonna head over to Taquanaman Falls to check those out. We made it to Taquanaman Falls and we have the whole place to ourselves. I don't know what she said, but I feel left out, so I'm here to do the same thing. <laughs> so to get into Taquanaman Falls today, we used our Michigan State's Park Pass, which was $34. We picked it up yesterday when we were at Kitchity Kippy. You can also get a $9 day pass, but since we're gonna be in Michigan for a few days, we decided to get the yearly pass and so far it's paid off. Also, come on a Monday at like, no, what's today? Still Tuesday. Okay, come on a Tuesday at like 9 a.m. because nobody's here at the falls with us. That's the lower falls that we were just at, and now we're gonna go over here to the upper falls. We're here at the Upper Falls and we found out some things about the river. So it's brown because as the vegetation decomposes around the river, it bleeds into the river. So it's actually just like natural components from trees and things blending into the river, which gives it its brown appearance. And there's actually a lot of foam as well. And that's explained in that the water is soft and there's mineral content as well as the organic matter is uh, decomposing and it's similar to like egg whites and then also the turbulence of the flow of water and all of those things combined lead to foam. And that's actually why it gets its name, the root beer falls. Between it being brown water and all the foam, they call it root beer. I bet it doesn't taste like that though. I bet you can find out. Oh, they Let us know. <laughs> Thank you. 
We're here at Whitefish Point Light Station and it's free to come down to this beautiful beach that they have access to here. There's a ton of beautiful driftwood in the area and Lake Superior is nice and calm. We've been told that you have to stick your feet in Lake Superior if you're here. Oh my God, it's so cold. <laughs> I took the challenge. Carly, I'm in boots. I put my hands in. <laughs> it was freezing but delightful. It's our second great lake that we've gotten to see here on this trip. And we're about to go see our third Lake Huron because we are headed over to Mackinac Island. Okay, so we're just leaving Mackinac Island. Carly, what were your impressions? I have to say that I truly went with low expectations and really enjoyed it. I think that we went for a really good amount of time. We went to Pink Pony for lunch and it was really good. We got the smoked whitefish dip. We also got pretzels because that's our thing. Then the French dip sandwich. But all in all, it's a cute little town, cute little area. When you get off of the ferry, it's your typical tourist area, and I, I really it's urge like you're you. You're at Disney, like you get off, and there's all of like the stores and the, the gift shops and things like that. Right. So definitely be sure to go a little bit more inland yes. and out, off of that area if you want to really experience it. Okay, this is Marquette Park. You're gonna go up that hill and follow the signs. We made, we made it, it to, to the, the top, top of, of our truck. truck. We just saw the top of Arch Rock. It is definitely worth the climb up here, but pro tip, you can avoid going up the 207 stairs by taking Arch Rock Road and then take the stairs down. So it's easier to take a hill up versus stairs up. At least that's what I think. And was it worth it? Absolutely. I can't believe the views that we saw. <laughs> definitely worth it. It was awesome. Good morning from Traverse City. We have made it to the cherry capital and our first stop was Cherry Republic for some cherry goodies. Carly, what did you get at the Cherry Republic? I got the cherry sauce. I got the peach cherry salsa, um, cherry root beer, cherry cream soda, which I'm very excited to try. All of it I am and a cherry barbecue rub. So just, just a thing or two. Got the cherry salsa and the boom chunk of cookies. Very excited for these. Not a huge cherry fan, but when in Rome. We also stopped at the village at Grand Traverse Commons. Used to be an asylum. They had about 3,800 patients and 800 employees. And this is one of the largest renovation projects done in the US. In 2000, it was bought out and now it has shops in the lower level and it has apartments and private residences in the upper levels. They still have the whole staff quarters that they have to do as well. So it looks like a massive project, but it was a cute stop. Lots of little like artisan shops and things along the way. Definitely worth checking out. Next up, we're gonna head to Little Fleet, which is a food truck village and try out all the yummy food. The Little Fleet was a great choice. We tried almost every food truck and we're super happy with the selections and quality. But as they say, there's always room for ice cream, so we made a stop at Moomers on the way to our next destination. We are here at Moomers Ice Cream. We've seen it all over Michigan. They sell it in all of these little shops, but this is their one and only store. It was voted the best ice cream shop in America. Farm to table takes on a new meaning here because the farm is literally right behind the table. This is so cool. So we got the flight. We're gonna try five different flavors and I hope that they're delightful. Melty madness. Uh, we have hot cocoa. I think it's good. It definitely, you can taste that it is hot cocoa. It's not just like your standard chocolate. For me, I like a dark chocolate. I like it to be very, very chocolatey. So it was good. I just personally wouldn't get a full cone of it. 
I would. Yeah, I thought it was delightful. Then we have the Samoa. It's like a refreshing, creamy sunscreen coconut, you know, but like I really like it. Is that weird? That says probably more about me than anything else. The Super Moo is definitely the most attractive. Very much not expecting to enjoy it, but it's pretty good. The chocolate with peanut butter, this was really good and the chocolate base was awesome. Then the Cherries Moobly, love me some. Cherry Garcia, very similar, but a bit more cherry focused. This one was featured on Good Morning America and I can see why. Our next stop was a drive through Sleeping Bear Dunes. They have a gorgeous drive through the park with lots of stop off points, but don't expect to go down the dunes here. It's a really steep drop into the lake and you can expect at least a two hour climb back up. A bit further south down the coast, we checked out the Little Sable Point Lighthouse. There's a ton of iconic lighthouses along the Michigan coast, so just take your pick. It was also crazy windy that afternoon, so we couldn't vlog any of it at the time. This whole trip has taken us five days and four nights. We spent three nights camping and we spent one night in a hotel, mostly because I couldn't hang with the campsite that was available to us. Carly asked me a few days ago if I would continue camping after this, if I liked camping. She's in her tent, I'm in my car. And I think the answer is yes, I actually do enjoy it. I think this last campsite that we were at, it's the, what is this place called? the PJ Hoffmeister State Park and honestly, this is probably my favorite so far. We've probably spent the least amount of time here, but it's just really beautiful walking around. Everybody's really spaced out. And I think I'm gonna be a little bit spoiled because we're here during off season. So all of the campsites that we've stayed at have been relatively empty, which has been really, really nice. But it's definitely been an experience. I've never camped before. So this is my first time really getting to do this. There have been some ups and downs. The downs have mostly been the bugs. <laughs> but besides that, it's actually pretty nice. I like waking up, looking out my sunroof and seeing trees and stars at night. So yeah, I could see doing this again. Good morning. Today is the last day of our trip. We are going to finish the Lake Michigan loop and last night we had an awesome surprise dinner. Mm -hmm. Surprise because we were just like we're hungry we need to find something and it ended up being phenomenal. Really <laughs> and we went to the station grill last night and that's where we got our awesome food. I got a grilled chicken sandwich and she got a black and blue burger and both were absolutely awesome. delicious. A lot of things so far in Michigan have been closing really early so we've been somewhat limited to what we've been able to do even like gas stations and stuff so just bear that in mind if you're doing this road trip as well. And now we're in Grand Haven we're about to check out their pier before heading south. Fun fact, Carly and I have seen this pier many times because we actually met at a nearby summer camp when we were kids. So we are here in Holland, Michigan, and there's a lot of Dutch themed places around, obviously. I absolutely love the Netherlands, so this was definitely a stop that I was going to be making on this trip. Our first stop was a bakery. I got an awesome Dutch Mafia coffee. It's delightful. And they're also known for their almond bars, so I did get one of those as well, which is very sweet and very delicious. Then we went to Window on the Waterfront, which is a great viewing point of the windmill. It is a little bit further away. You can pay to actually go in and see it, uh, but we decided to skip that. Now we're here at Nellis' Dutch Village. There is actually a theme park here as well. Probably a great stop if you have kiddos, but I'm just here to do some shopping. We are just leaving Nellis. Yeah, I wasn't ready. Okay. Okay. One, two, now. We are just leaving Nellis's Dutch Village. We did some shopping. We did get some goodies that we wanted to share with you. Starting First, with... we have our windmill spiced cookies. Got my coffee from Lemon Jello. I heard these two go together. You're supposed to dip them in your coffee, and I'm pretty pumped. You'll have to let us know how it is. I will. I got some medium Gouda cheese and the cutest little gift bag ever. I got the cutest little magnet ever. It's these little clogs with tulips in them. Would you recommend? stopping in Holland if you're going if you're around. If you're 
on the tour anyway, absolutely, but I don't think it's necessarily something you need to go out of your way to see. I think if the tulips were in bloom, absolutely yes. go out of your way. But it's just a cute little town. Um, I think if you have kids, it'd be really fun to stop at some of these places. Yes, yeah, Shay won't let me go into here because she knows I'll try and steal all the animals from the petting zoo <laughs> and I can't be trusted. And really, we just don't have the room to house yeah. animals for our ride home. But I'm gonna dig into these cookies and let you know how they taste. Yeah. And I'm gonna force Shay to eat some as well. Cute. Dip, dip. And we're back with our cookie review. It's like a speculus spiced cookie, a little bit different than speculus, but very good. I think it tastes like gingerbread. It's mm -hmm. really good. I did not dunk mine into coffee. I did. I was very surprised by how little time the dunk was needed. It was, it was impressive, but glad we got them. Mm -hmm. Very good. I'd recommend them. Yeah. Do we like this better than Stroop waffles? No. Yeah, if you haven't tried a Stroop waffle, you need Spend to. every dollar you've ever made in your life and get just just clear the store out. Our next stop is going to be Holland State Park. We're going to go check out their lighthouse before heading to South Haven. Bye. See you there. here at the Rolling Stone Baker and we got two different pizzas to try. We got this one, which is the Purple Pig. It's got smoked pork shoulder, barbecue, mozzarella, provolone blend, and a tangy purple slaw. And then this one is the Eggman and it's got roasted garlic, ricotta, prosciutto, mozzarella provolone blend, wood fired egg, arugula, and some other goodies. And the elote. Thinking back on these past five days, I'm honestly blown away by some of the natural beauty the Midwest has to offer. We had a lot of other places we wanted to see along this route that five days frankly just isn't enough for, but along the way, we referred to this trip as a taste test to see which places we'd like to go back and explore more of. I'm sharing this video to show you the highlights of the trip, but it can easily be tailored to your interest and whatever length of time you have to spend on this. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.